Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have five card ideas to share with the new Spellbinders Beautiful Wreath collection designed by Suzanne Hugh. This is a new influencer collection. It is a debut collection from Suzanne and it is fabulous. Now there are other influencer collections this month. There is one from Nicole Spore called Mary Mug and Circle Delights. And there was a fabulous collection from Justine Dwork last month called Game Day. And I hope to circle back to those collections as well and share some card ideas using them with you once I have them. This video, however, is all about using Suzanne's wreath collection to create beautiful wreath cards. So there are five products in this release. There is a main die set called Build the Wreath, and it includes basic elements that you need to create your wreath. So you have several branch options. Some are smaller, some are larger, you know, depending on the size of the wreath that you want to make. You also have a die to create a bow and some dies to create flowers. So this is the basic wreath set and you'll want to get this one to be able to create the wreaths for your cards. Now there is also a bundle available if you want to get all five die sets. And if you do get the bundle, you're actually able to save a little bit because there is a little bit of a discount. The other four sets in this collection are all seasonal add-ons. There is a Halloween set. I love that one. I rarely make Halloween cards because here I have no one to give them to as Halloween isn't really celebrated here in Ukraine. But I personally love to make Halloween cards. If, if I do make them, I just make them for myself. You know, I make them for fun, for the sake of the crafting process. And I really enjoy making them. And so I have two Halloween cards to share today. There's also a Christmas add-on set. I enjoyed using that one as well. It includes some poinsettias, another type of a beautiful bow. And by the way, I think every add-on, I think every die set in this collection includes a different type of bow. And I think it's just genius because you end up having so many different bow dies that you can incorporate and use uh, in your other projects. And these bows, they're, they're layered and dimensional, so they look very, very pretty. So you also have a snowman, an ornament, a Christmas tree, and I do have two cards to share using this set as well. Now, it doesn't have this this die set. It doesn't necessarily have to be used with the wreath die set. You don't have to use these elements just to make the wreaths. You can use the elements separately. For example, that snowman works well on its own and the same goes for the Christmas tree, the ornament and the poinsettias. I like how Suzanne designed these dies. You know, the, they are meant to be used together, but if you don't want to make a wreath, you have the option to use the elements for something else and the elements are large enough to be used alone as a standalone element. And by the way, I encourage you to pop over to the Spellbinders blog because there are some guest designers who are sharing some fabulous card ideas using these dies. Now there's also a garden wreath add-on die set and this one is a good basic set. Also you can use it with a wreath builder or alone as you have some images in here that are curved and would work well to create a wreath. So even if you don't get the main die set, the main wreath set, you can get just this garden wreath add-on and still you'll be able to create your wreath because of the curved um, foliage in here. There are also some very pretty flower shapes in this set, and I especially love the square flower shape. I don't think I have a flower like that in my stash, so I'm excited for this addition to my crafty stash. And the last set in this release is the birthday wreath add-on. This one features a bunch of birthday imagery. There's a party hat, a gift, a balloon, a cupcake, a party streamer. Now, this is the only die set that I didn't use, but I still wanted to mention it and show it to you guys because I know a lot of you are going to enjoy it. Okay, let's jump to the card making part of this video. And I'm going to start with a Halloween cards and the Halloween wreath add-on die set. 
So I first foiled some backgrounds in Spellbinders Black Opaque Foil on the Spellbinders Indigo cardstock and the Simon Says Stamp Soft Navy cardstock. The Soft Navy is the lighter blue and the Indigo is the darker blue. I used these Spellbinders Better Press plates to create these backgrounds and instead of better pressing them, I foiled them. The black foil here is opaque, it has no shine, and you probably could have used black ink and simply better press these images and you would have had the same result. There is a shiny black foil from Spellbinders if you, you know, want to have a shiny effect on your paper so you can use that foil. The first background was made using the Pumpkins and Ghosts Better Press plate. And you can see that that plate is slightly smaller than an A2 panel. So slightly small, smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half inches. The second background was created using the Spiderweb background plate. And that plate is a little bit bigger. It actually goes outside the edges of your A2 card base. And I like them both. I like how the first background is sort of framed. And and I like how the second background bleeds outside the edge and you have that spider web covering the entire background. It's very pretty. I noticed that I had a little bit of overfoiling on my spider web background. Had I better pressed it, I would not have had this issue, but I really wanted to foil these. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Halloween add-on set. I didn't die cut all of the images, but I die cut most to show you how they look and how you can combine and assemble them. So you have the Happy Halloween sentiment die if you want to add a sentiment to your card. I ended up using better press plates to create sentiments for my cards today, but all of these come with an appropriate sentiment that you can die cut for your card um, designs. You have the season's greetings in the Christmas add-on sad, the happy Halloween and the Halloween sad, and the happy birthday in the birthday add-on set. So here we also have this beautiful witch hat and it has several layers so you can cut it from different colors of cardstock. I have also added some ink blending and shading to help this image appear dimensional. There is a little jack-o'-lantern candy holder that you can create. Here I made one from Spellbinders Indigo cardstock and I added some orange cardstock from the background. I used foam adhesive squares to adhere these two layers and that gave me some dimension. I think this way it looks a little bit more realistic and a little bit better this way. I mean, anything that has a little bit of dimension, it already looks great. So I always try to add dimension to my die cuts. Here is an orange pumpkin where I did not add any foam adhesive to the back layer. And you can see how different these look. So the orange one is super flat. And the blue one looks so much better. I've tucked the little ghost die cuts into my blue candy holder and I love this. If you want, you can also add the witch hat onto your pumpkin and that looks fabulous. There are so many options how you can combine these dies. You also have um, candy dies included in this die set. You have a bunch of different bat dies that you can die cut from black cardstock to decorate your wreath or to decorate your scene. I die cut mine from brushed black cardstock from Spellbinders and they look fabulous. Here, I wanted to show you how I created the candies for my card. So I die cut candy from orange cardstock and from blue cardstock. And here I'm using the new Spellbinders blending brushes and Simon Says Stamp positively saturated ink to add a little bit of ink blending to the edges of the candy. Now, I also wanted to mention these new blending brushes from Spellbinders. I love how small they are. They come in a pack of three, so there's um, three different sizes. And I love them for stenciling because I can get into little, um, you know, tiny little details on my stencils, but I also love to use them when I'm ink blending small die kits such as these. So with the ink blending done, I added a foam adhesive square from the back of my candy and I inlaid the opposite color die cut piece inside to create two color, like multicolor candies for my card. 
I also dyed a candy corn and here instead of using the regular colors, the white and orange, I went with orange and blue. And I really like this color combination for a Halloween card. It's a little bit different, a little bit non-traditional. I'm not really a fan of purple for Halloween. I do like the orange, but I think I prefer to combine the orange with the uh, blue. I die cut a bunch of branches. So I have four branches cut from two different shades of brown. And four is enough to create one pretty large circle wreath on your card. As I layer the two different color branches, you can see what kind of wreath I can expect to have on my card. Now, I also decided I wanted to add some shading. So once again, I used that same blending brush from Spellbinders and the Simon Says DM Positively Saturated Inks. And I added a little bit of shading to the inside of my die cuts. As I was doing my ink blending, because these are so dainty, I have found that um, the ink blending works best if I inlay the die cut back into the negative space, use that negative space to hold the die cut in place, and then do my ink blending. This worked a little bit better. I did not break any of my die cuts as I was doing my ink blending, and it just, it just gave me a better result this way. So with the ink blending done, I used Barely Art Glue and I connected the ends of these die cuts together to create a wreath shape. You can draw a circle, you can die cut a circle and use that as a guide. I basically eyeballed what I was doing. And besides, it's very easy to do it to eyeball with these dies because they are curved. So they are designed to make a wreath. I then used glue and added a little bit more glue to adhere the top layer of my branches. And now I have a slightly fuller wreath. So if you want, you can have, you know, as a, a simple wreath with just one layer of die cuts, or you can create a much fuller wreath by adding another layer of die cuts on top. With the wreath done, I used foam adhesive squares and I foam mounted the witch hat and the jack-o'-lantern bucket onto the wreath. And then again, I used glue to adhere the wreath onto my card. I typically like to pop things up. So I wanted to pop the wreath up on my card, but these die cuts are very, very dainty. They're very detailed. It would have been impossible to add foam adhesive from the back of them. So I just used glue and I adhere them directly onto my card background. Then I added a bunch of different bat die cuts. I love that there are four different shapes in this die set. So you have a lot to choose from. Now, I also added the candy corn and the other candy to the opposite side of my wreath to balance things out. To create a sentiment, I used the Halloween Icons Better Press plate set from Spellbinders, and I actually foiled these in the opaque white foil on the coordinating color, on the basically the same color of cardstock that I used for the background. So on indigo and on soft navy. So here's a look at the two Halloween cards created with this collection. The second card features some flowers created with a garden add-on die set. And I simply used an orange color, like brown and orange colors together to create uh, flowers for the Halloween wreath. And I love the way that this worked. It was so easy to do. I embellished my cards with the Spellbinders gems in black to add a little bit of sparkle. And now that I have the sparkle from the gems, I'm actually glad that I didn't use the shiny foil to foil the backgrounds because I feel that might have added a little bit of too much sparkle and shine to my cards. Next, I have the Christmas cards for you. Here, I once again used Better Press plates and I foiled them. Instead of using black foil, I went with matte gold for a bit more festive look. This Joy to the World plate is from the Holiday Foliage Press plate set that is available exclusively on the Spellwinders website. And I have a link to it below, along with all the other products that I'm using for these cards. I foiled this plate on blue cardstock, and now I'm just adding some ink blending around the edges to create a vignette. 
darker edges, and lighter center. I'm blending this ink with a large Simon Says Stamp blending brush, and I'm using this brush here because of the brush size, as I need to ink blend a very large area, and I need to do this quickly. The smaller the brush you use, the longer it's going to take you to ink blend a large area. And it's actually very helpful to have different size brushes in your stash, because that allows you to ink blend different types of projects, different size of projects um, in no time. I also added black ink blending using Tsukineko Versifying Onyx Black Ink. And here I have switched to the Spellbinders blending brush and I'm using this brush because it is a smaller brush and I don't really need that large brush anymore because I'm not ink blending that large of an area. I just need to ink the edges here. Next, I die cut branches using dies from the main build a wreath die set, and I'm adding some color variation to these using my Copic markers. You can also add ink blending like I showed you when I was making my Halloween cards. But when I'm using a marker, I have a bit more control over how and where I apply the color. If you want, you can really take your time and add some beautiful coloring and beautiful shading to these. And I think that would look just amazing. But if you just want to have a little bit of color, you know, a little bit of contrast, some shading and highlights, using just one marker and darkening, darkening the uh, central portion works really well. I glued the branches together to create a wreath and I have a double layer here as well to have a fuller wreath. And then I used Barely Arts glue to adhere my wreath to the card. So once again, I'm not using foam adhesive to pop my wreath up here because the wreath is composed of very detailed and dainty images or die cuts and there's no room to hide that foam adhesive behind those die cuts. I also have a beautiful bow cut from two shades of red cardstock and also poinsettias cut from the same shades of red. There's one large poinsettia and several small poinsettias. I have additional holly leaves cut from darker green and I'm adding those using foam adhesive squares to pop them up on my background. I added gold glitter flower centers to my poinsettias. Again, these were die cut using a die included in this set. And I die cut those from gold glitter fun foam. So there is a little bit of dimension to those. And then there's also a little bit of glitter. And I just love the way they look. And I also adhered a bunch of aura sequins from Spellbinders to my wreath. Now I want to create a look of falling snow here. So I'm going to add some white paint splatter. I do want to protect my flower center. So I've cut a piece of paper, just scrap paper to protect that center. I've added a little bit of white acrylic paint onto my work mat and I'm using a water brush to add a drop of water to dilute my paint to be able to splatter it onto my card. Now here I really went overboard with my, with my splatters and I added a ton of splatter. This is not something that I do often. In fact, this is very much not me. This is not my style, but I've been watching a lot of videos from Dawn Walslegel and she kind of inspired me to do this. You know, I really wanted to try this different look here. Now, I also use this paint to color the branches and the leaves white to emphasize that snow. Now, the paint will give you a flat layer of color, but I wanted to have a little bit of more of a dimensional look. So I went and looked through my stash and I used a different product. This is a pearl white stardust butter. You can find it in the Spellbinder shop or you know you can use uh, any white paste that you might have in your stash and use it to add a little bit of paste to the edges of the branches and the leaves and that creates the illusion of snow because it adds a little bit of dimension and that that looks just really really cool. So here's a look at this card once finished. I love this. Like I said, this is not my style, but I really wanted to give this messy mixed media look a try and I love the result. Now, I have been showing you circular wreaths up until now, but you can, of course, make oval wreaths using these dies. Here, I have foiled a much larger sentiment. This one comes from the All Is Calm, All Is Bright set, 
And I wanted to frame this sentiment with a wreath. So instead of making a circle wreath, I used my die cuts to run the wreath along the edge of the card. Here, I used the die cuts not only from the main builder wreath die set, but also from the garden add-on. And you can see I have other type die cuts here. There is one with the leaves, and then there's also another one with red flowers, or I guess you can call these berries. And I have also used that same one for one of the Halloween cards where I had the orange berries. Now I played around with a placement and I adhered my die cuts to the background once I was happy. I also added poinsettias here and I added a red foiled sentiment made with the better press plates. I wanted to quickly show you the process of making these sentiments. These come from the Merry and Bright sentiment strips set. And I love that these are all grouped together and they also have a coordinating die to cut these all out together at once. The Halloween sentiments that I use for my Halloween cards, they are all, they feature the same concept. So the sentiments are all grouped together and then you have a coordinating die with a bunch of banners that are grouped together. This saves a ton of time and allows you to create a bunch of sentiments in basically a matter of minutes. I used red cardstock and mad gold foil here. And basically, I followed the instructions for my Glimmer Hot Foil system. And I foiled these better press sentiments as if I was using Glimmer plates. Because as you know, you can foil with your better press plates. You cannot press with your glimmer plates, but you can foil with better press plates. I then used a coordinating die. I positioned it over my foiled sentiments. I aligned it. I taped it in place using my best ever craft tape and I die cut the sentiments all at once. And look, we have a ton of sentiments in just like two or three minutes. I think it didn't take longer than that. Now I just need to figure out a cool storage system for these pre-made sentiments so that I can store them, but also search them and use them, you know, um, easily. I added one of the sentiments in the center of my card, running across my main foil sentiment in the background. And of course, I added a ton more splatter. I love this look. Now, I did cover the main sentiment strip with another sentiment strip to protect it from splatter and keep it clean and legible. But once again, I added a ton of that splatter. I did skip adding uh, paint onto the die kits and I skipped using that other butter product. But I think with or without it, it looks fantastic. So here's a look at the two Christmas cards I have for you today using the beautiful wreath collection from Suzanne Hugh and Spellbinders. And here you can see all five cards I have created using these dies. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you feel inspired to create. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.